All right, Shalom, Shalom, uh, Facebook and, and, and uh, YouTube, we are live. Shalom, Shalom. And we're glad to be here. We're going to have a nice study tonight. Uh, the, the community is kind of light. Everybody is sick and under the weather, so we ask Everybody. for the audience to keep them in, in prayers. And uh, this is NHIT. We are not affiliated with any camps or hate groups. We are reading out of the King James Version Bible using the words Yahuwah, Aleyam, and Yahuwah She in place of Lord, God, and Jesus. The Nazarene Hebrew Temple and Institute of Technology presents The Account of the Giants Part 2, Megalithic Structures. Shalom Lakam, everybody. Oh, all right so we very light today everybody's sick as uh, brother bear walk mentioned but we have some uh information so to speak that we want to uh, share with everybody uh about uh, a lot of ancient sites that uh, have been discovered all over this planet that nobody can really account for uh the, the the Bible tells us uh, all we need to know about some of these things, along with other uh, ancient manuscripts that are in Bible, older Bibles over in uh, Africa. So, uh, can we go to Genesis chapter 6 real quick? I don't know where they finding all this stuff at, man. This stuff is crazy. They got all kind of stuff out here. Man, these are just little things they let know, man. They they know what it is. Hmm. We got a little ads on the side, so uh, I definitely, uh, forgive me, I got to figure out how to get rid of these commercials. Uh, but yeah, we still, you still can see the scriptures, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's small, but we can, I guess they can see them. All right. Can you read uh, Genesis 6, verse 1 down, 4? It's the book of Genesis, chapter 6, <laughs> verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters and daughters were born unto them. The sons of Allah Hayyam saw the daughters of men that they fed. Hold on a second. We need to, this needs to be stressed right here, right now in the older the older scrolls that we have access to the predate this uh the leningrad codex which is the manuscript used to translate the king james old testament uh, we we rely on the genesis uh version from the dead sea scrolls which is over a thousand years older than this it does not say sons of god it says angels of god so it says uh with that understanding now, we can go back and, and, and read that verse over again. This is book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 2. The angels of Allah Hayyam saw the daughters of men that they fared, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And Yahuwah said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now this allegedly, this is supposed to have happened or occurred according to Josephus or during Moses' birth. Come on. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those now, 
Jesus. We we need to all sit up and, and meditate on what's being said here. They have a, a Hebrew word translated as giant. We actually don't know the full extent of, of what they're saying giants are. Because when we see giants, we uh, get our understanding from the depictions that they have throughout all the media. But we know that in another ancient manuscript that's been mentioned, uh, the Book of the Division of Days and Times, which is called Jubilees, it tells us specifically in chapter 7, verse 22 down, that when these events happen, that the pen spoken of right here, the angels and the daughters of mankind began to procreate. There were at least three different classes of uh, monstrosities created from that union. So we don't, well, we can't be sure. Uh, because it says in Hebrew, this word that they translated giants, uh, it's it's saying uh, Nafalayam. Now the giants was born on earth. And we know that Nafal in Hebrew, it means to uh, descend or to fall. That's the angels that they're speaking of right there. Mm -hmm. And the word for giants is also used in this verse, but it's later on in the verse, and it's Gabarayam. Gabarayam meaning giants so we got to look at this verse with a with a whole totally different understanding than how they got it translated because uh, the uh translators uh in a lot of instances did not do a very good job with translating uh, uh the scriptures come on six uh six verse four there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when when the angels of Allah Hayyam came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear to them the same mighty men which of old, men of renown. Now, for everybody that's listening in the audience, uh, this is a consistent testimony that it was something going on down here on the planet earth and it was not human beings okay this is in every culture all the ancient civilizations uh sumerian uh, egyptian when you look at the pictures and paintings on, on the pyramids uh, over in europe even over in europe uh they had stories and history oral histories of, of giants even over here in america we're really going to touch the, the portion of America next week when we go into part three of this teaching uh, because uh, it's a teaching out that um, America is the ancient world. We're going to we're going to deal with that and we're going to present evidence about that uh, next Wednesday. But one thing that I can tell you for a, a certainty based off of uh archaeological uh discoveries it was something going on over here in america particularly the midwest and south america dealing with what we would call uh monstrosities they have the uh, requisite uh findings uh all of the archaeological uh evidence artifacts oral testimony it's a lot we're going to deal with a lot of it next Wednesday. So we've got a witness that it was something going on down here on earth that happened when the messengers of Yahweh came down and they began to uh, lead a natural habitat and uh, have uh, procreations and relationships with the uh, daughters of man. So I want to point you out to a bunch of uh, findings. Before we go there, I would like you to go to uh, Jubilees chapter 7 so we can mention it. Show this real quick. Unbelievable the stuff that's been here from us. Now, y'all know that the Catholic Church banned these books. Did everything in their power to block Enoch and Jubilees from being in the, in the when they started to, when they got control of our scriptures and they began to canonize. They didn't want this in there. And we're going to give you some witness where they actually 
lock people up and murder them because they wouldn't recant of some of the stuff that uh, they had read and, and had evidence on. Verse 22, uh, Bear Watt, please, sir. <clears throat> this is the book of Jubilees, chapter 7, verse 22. And they begat sons, the Nephilim, and they were all unlike, or excuse me, unlike. And they devoured one another. And the giant slew the Nephil, and the Nephil slew the Eljo, and the Eljo mankind. So now we get at least three different categories of something. We get what they're saying is giants. We get what they're saying is Nephil. And we get what they're saying is Eljo. And according to this ancient text, it's saying that they were all dissimilar. Keep reading now. It's going to be some more. It's going to be some, some wicked stuff y'all getting ready to read. And one man another. And everyone sold himself to work iniquity and to shed much blood. And the earth was filled with iniquity. And after this, they sinned against the beasts and the birds. What in the world? Nobody never wants to talk about this. If the reports of the size of these things is true from what we got from ancient testimony. What in the world could come from a, a union when they're abusing the animals? So what do y'all what do y'all think comes from such a union? Just hold that thought now. Hold that thought. Oh. Nobody's talking about none of this. But they keep talking about these mastodons and these pterodactyls, and and then you gotta ask yourself. Well, why didn't none of them survive the flood? Why didn't, but all the other animals did. The animals that was created from the Heavenly Father. It was something that's going on down here on this planet and a lot of people are doing a lot to uh, hide information. It was, it, it kind of grieved me when I was reading how the, the Chinese, ancient Chinese government, they burned all the history books. We know about the Library of Alexandria. We know about Timbuktu. And we know about when, when Europe began to uh, enslave the uh, modern world, that they burnt everything and they began to uh, set themselves up and reshape and uh, give a false narrative about history. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, the Israelites stopped resembling uh dark complexed people and they started resembling uh the people in europe uh so did the uh ancient uh babylonians and the you know every the indians everybody in the ancient world now was no longer dark they look like the people in europe so we haven't been able to get an accurate and truthful narrative about things that was going on on the planet in ancient times because for whatever reasons uh the people in europe wanted to destroy everything and we you know we need to uh begin reassessing some of the things that we're finding and i'm going to present y'all now uh with a great deal of evidence but we, i got one more verse in the bible that i want to go to uh exodus 22 verse 19. Whenever y'all see verses like this and they just pop up out of nowhere and you'd be like, wait a minute, why is this in the Bible? And you thought it was no mention of this anywhere, but it was written for a reason. And the reason is what we just read in Jubilees. Enoch is also a second witness to what we just read in Jubilees chapter 7. Look at verse 19, Enoch. It's the book of Exodus chapter 22, verse 19. So Abraham. Abraham returned unto his young men and they rose up and went together to Bathsheba. Are uh, you in Exodus 22 19? Oh, Abraham, ben, 
<laughs> That's my fault, everybody. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 19. <laughs> whosoever liveth, I mean, excuse me, whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. Now, everybody just needs to ask themselves this question. Okay, people say, our oh, Bible study is about, we're all saved. We're saved. And I'm praying that everybody that's listening to this has accepted our Savior for the eternal salvation. But he tells us himself in Matthew 24. Can we go to Matthew 24? That didn't just come out of nowhere what he just read. Something had to have happened for that to be there. Look around verse 32, I would just say. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 24. We start on verse 32. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. You in Matthew 24? Yeah. Uh, let me see. This screen is so small, I can't see it. it speaks about Noah. Hold on one second. Now. Let me open up my Bible. Do, 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 do. Some of the stuff I'm getting ready to share with y'all. Now, remember, we're talking about stuff that happened before the flood. We understand that all of that was according to all of the A few verses down. I, so you're talking about the days of Noah? <coughs> yeah. Uh, verse, verse 37, 36 and 37. Yeah, 36. Uh, you want 36 first? 36, yeah. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Excuse me, knoweth no. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of no, so shall all the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's telling us, and because people say, what does this giant stuff got to do with, with uh, salvation or anything? He's telling us upon his return, it's going to be like the days of Noah. So we need to all be well versed with what happened in the days, during the days of Noah. And we know that during Noah's time, that's when the flood occurred. What events led to the flood? We just read it in Genesis 6. It was some engineering going on, let's say. <laughs> uh, some species mixing that shouldn't have been going on. Uh, crossbreeding, we'll say, genetic crossbreeding. Now, as we just read in Matthew 24, he said it's going to be like the days of Noah. So now, that's over with now. The flood happened. Uh, Genesis 7, 22 say everything got killed. So does the Dead Sea Scrolls and the and admonition associated with the flood. So does the Genesis Apocryphon. All of the ancient manuscripts is saying the same thing. That whatever is being called giants in Genesis 6, verse 4, all of that stuff got annihilated. Everything got wiped out, except those eight people and the animals on the ark. Now, here's what we need to find out. Where did all of these abnormal sized uh, beings come from after the flood. Here go your dates. 1892 AD France off the Mediterranean coast an 11 feet tall humanoid was discovered. His skeletal remains. 11 feet tall. That's almost twice the size of a normal man. And this is a this is not even one of the big skeletons we're going to talk about. 
Is anybody familiar with what the term polydactyl means? Uh, polydactyl. Uh, my thing has got something to do with DNA, though. No, it's six six toes, six fingers. Six toes. Okay. So, in South America, after having previously fed us. Uh, all they understanding of, of the history after they did so much to destroy it. Uh, <laughs> the true history of, of the world. We found out now that it is an entire tribe called the Waroni tribe. Where the entire tribe is polydactyl. Now when you know on all of these gigantic skeletons, all of the skeletal remains from what I've read, and I read a lot, possess six feet, six fingers, and six toes. Wow. It's more. A lot of people gonna get angry about what I'm getting ready to read. Science backs up this claim. This is not uh something that we're making up. Neanderthal DNA. Neanderthal DNA has traces found in people of Europe. Asia, modern inhabitants, and Central and South America. Now y'all meditate on it. It is not a uh, a genetic trait in people of color. So y'all meditate on that. October 1953, in Sardinia, Sardinia Italy, there are reports of multiple nine feet to 12 feet tall skeletons that have been discovered. Now, I don't know what was going on down here, but it was something going on. And we all need to ask ourselves because what the Messiah told us, he said, watch and pray, meaning we got to pay attention to things that's going on in the world. The adversary is trying to keep us so distracted with bills, with uh, get, uh sports for the kids and uh you know everything else under the sun besides what is really going on in front of us it's it should be alarming to everybody that they're finding all of this stuff and the governments that are su supposed to serve and protect us are doing everything they can to hide these truths from us now multiple just pay attention to that over uh in India, they have rock art that has been dated to 8,000 BC, according to them, that depicts alien type beings or, or beings and, and uh, humanoid uh, type uh, people or things that are not indigenous to this planet. We, we need to try to fathom uh, what is going on with this because we get, we're just touching on a few of these little modern findings. Now, it's going to be some other things that's more older. We're gonna, they're going to have to explain it. All right. I have to bring this up. I would be remiss if I didn't. The Great Sphinx over in Egypt. Everybody's familiar with the Great Sphinx, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. It has been discovered during uh, uh, scientific uh, exploration and, and other great sphinx that it has water erosion or, or water damage and not sand erosion. Now, because it has the water damage, right? Y'all listening? Uh -huh. It significantly changes the dating from 2500 BC to about 12,000 years ago, which puts it at 10,000 BC. Now, I find this really shocking for everybody that agrees that it was a flood, what I'm about to share with y'all. They found microorganisms uh, 
that you only can find in the sea embedded within some of the uh the structures of these pyramids and in the sphinx so and it's another thing that i want y'all to to, to to meditate on because now they're trying to say that gobekli techly is older than the pyramids where they were until this came up but it's it's strange that things that connect to uh european origins that they get the benefit of the doubt uh so they have these 3d or three-dimensional uh animal figures in gobekli techly and anybody that hasn't did any research or read up on gobekli techly please do uh so they said oh it's older than the sphinx it's, it's the oldest thing we got now they based that off of the 3d animal uh uh anthropomorphic uh things that uh, or creatures that they have in there what they have they have uh found the, the exact same uh, system with the sphinx but they don't get the benefit of the doubt the sphinx is in africa so it's it's a conspiracy going on to remove uh the start of, of civilization of mankind away from the african continent and all of the uh significant uh monuments and things of antiquity they want to remove from africa for whatever reason i don't know it makes no sense uh now so here we go again and i want to make this statement and i want to make this claim live there is a it has to be and this is the only thing that makes any type of sense it has to be an anti-diluvian civilization that is responsible for all of these sites i'm about i'm getting ready to, to give y'all uh and and this means civilization before the flood all right in our in our, our armenia there are megalithic structures and circles dated from 5500 bc i'm going to name some manuscripts now we're going to go back to some of these structures anybody familiar with the enuma elish The it is the, it's the babylonian creation epic i had read it i thought that it was a total fraud but then i looked at it and i did some reading and even even within a lie it it, it, it causes a, a bit of controversy for somebody that is uh can contemplate it on, on real science now it gives a theory in there about the asteroid belt that i and i tell you i believe the bible uh hands down with with every facet of me but they have a theory in the numa leash about the asteroid belt uh some people may want to look at that all right there's another uh, ancient manuscript from uh, the sumerian culture called the epic of Gilgamesh. there's another one called the 14 lost tablets of inky those are sumerian uh, constructs now we get to the mahabharat, mahabharat that is the indian or the hindu writing which talks about way back then that they had flying ships uh and things of that nature where they was traveling from one end of the planet and to other planets in those ancient manuscripts now it's if you don't want to believe that i can't force you to but i'm telling you what they have recorded all we're doing is speaking about what they have recorded they also have the the, the ramayana the suraya uh and the puranos so they have a great deal of uh and remember this is a sad note right here i previously had instructed y'all and told y'all that the chinese ancient chinese civilization and the ancient uh they burned down all of their history books then you have uh what happened with the library in uh, alexandria then you have what they did with timbuktu and why the muslims are still going over there 
trying to destroy all of the history out of Africa. Everybody came over there and robbed and stole all the gold that they could steal and all the other natural resources. They enslaved us, and then they wanted to come and burn the history of what they did and why they did it. And now this is why you get uh, the, the Israeli people have fabricated a, 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 a culture and a nativity, and they're not claiming that they are the people that's being written about in the Bible. Uh, that is, uh, I can't even understand how somebody could listen to that. I don't even know how they got away with it so long, but I mean, you know, hey, like I said, when I was talking about uh, the Sphinx versus uh, Gobekli Tekli, we never get any of, of the, what we do in terms of antiquity. Uh, they will always look at their own people to give them their truth. Even if they find out it's a lie, they won't come clean and say, hey, well, we made a mistake. They will uh, hold on and regurgitate the lies from the ancestors. All right. So now we got some more books, though. The Codex Vaticanus. That's the Mexican one of their book, one of their writings. And then we have everybody will know about this: the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Coffin Text, the Pyramid Text, and the Om or the Egyptian Bible. All writings which detail that something was going on down here on Earth. All of them detail that something was going on. Now remember, the Catholic Church uh, went out of their way to set up their own. Uh, land of books to read in the scriptures i'm not saying that those books are scripture but i'm just telling you other civilizations and cultures had other different views than we get we have so now we have some of these uh what's going what we're going to classify as uh megalithic or cyclopean structures we have puma punka in the andes mountain now i need y'all to all wrap your heads around what i'm about to say because we read in Genesis 6 4 that those angels came down here and they started sleeping with these women. Where did they live? Where did they stay? What was the cause of Satan sending in the first place? He wanted to be worshipped, correct? Correct. He, according to Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, he wanted to put himself in place of the most high Allah Hayyam, Yahweh, correct? Correct. So you know, uh Corinthians speaks about him having uh, his own ministers. So this means that the angels, perhaps, that was uh, under his influence or he was a part of their movement, they wanted to be worshipped. So they set up places of worship down here on earth. You tell me how Puma Punka in the Andes Mountains is 12,800 feet. Right? This is about half the size of Mount Everest. It's 12,800 feet of altitude above the natural tree line. Wow. And they have 26 foot long, 100 ton each megalithic rocks or boulders and structures. With you, you couldn't even squeeze a sheet of paper between them. They have been carved to precision so greatly. Now, at that altitude, we don't possess the technology today in 2024 to get that up where they have it at. So someone explained to me what in the world was happening down here on this planet. Now, scientists are saying that they are much older than Puma Punka. We're just dealing with Puma Punka now. They've carbon dated it to 536 to 600 AD. The scientist is saying it is much older than that. Something for y'all to meditate on. I know you, you got to meditate on it. That's We're so talking cool. about hundreds. What you say? I, no, I said that height is uh, extraordinary right there. That, that is a crazy height. Uh, how did they get it there? That's the whole thing. Yeah. Even modern machinery today can't do this. <laughs> And that's, that's looked at as small compared to some of the stuff y'all going to find out. So here goes some more evidence I'm getting ready to give y'all. In the Yucatan, in Cambodia, in Botswana, Botswana been in the middle of everything, but y'all know Africa's got all of the old stuff anyway. 
okay, in Glen Rose, Texas, over here in America. Wow. In Peru, there is exi <clears throat> there exists ancient artwork of <clears throat> creatures or, or, or monstrosities we're going to use that are said to be dinosaurs. But get this, audience. They're interacting with human beings. And these are ancient. This is ancient artwork. And it's all over the world. It's not in one place. So what was going on down here on this planet all over the world where all of these different groups is talking about it? Well, they had knowledge of it or they was depicting what they saw. Mm. And yeah. you, as, as you heard when we read the Matthew 24, 36 and 37, the Messiah told us when he come back, it's going to be like the times of Noah. All right. The Glen Rose question. Go ahead. The Glen Rose, Texas uh, one, that was in the cave too as well? They got stuff in, in the inside and outside. Okay. They got footprints of stuff that is not, uh, you know, they, they claiming dinosaurs, but we don't know what that stuff. These, these is terms that modern sciences gave up. Right. I want the testimony of the ancient people, what they saying. It's, it's like it's lining up with Enoch and Jubilees, if you if you ask me, but, you know, well, they the experts. They've been to school for it. In the Giza Plaza, researchers have discovered that the stones <laughs> used for the blocks on the pyramids have marine life organisms. This makes this is making the researchers now, remember I mentioned this earlier, think that at one point that the pyramids were submerged underwater. Do anybody, can y'all believe that? Do anybody, y'all think that's possible? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. With the stuff we're finding out, yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. Now, this was Bear Walk started me down this 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 lane right here where we started teaching about this stuff because it's it needs to be taught about. We can't run from stuff like this, and the Bible clearly is 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 documenting and recording it. And we keep talking about the pyramids. I believe, did I mention that uh, what Josephus said about who built the pyramids? Uh, book two, Antiquities of the Jews, chapter nine. Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, book two, chapter nine. It's a quote in there from Josephus where he said that we, the children of Israel, built the pyramids. Y'all yeah. meditate, meditate on that. <clears throat> now, that means we must have had access to the technology or whatever they was doing back then to to build these structures so may the 21st 1992 for anybody that's taking notes y'all that's listening there was an explosion in western china and it caused the discovery of a colossal structure what many are saying is a pyramid in alaska all right y'all listening to this we never knew that they had nothing that they saying is a pyramid in Alaska. 2005 AD, Dr. Sam Morovich discovered five pyramid structures in Bosnia. See, coming up as a child, when you my age, born in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s, we were always led to have an understanding that the pyramids was all in Africa and they started finding some over in South America. But that's not the, the, the truth. They are everywhere, all over the world. They got them in Europe. They got them over in Asia. They got them over in what's being called in modern times the Caribbean. Watch if you're mistaken, uh, I believe, man, I'm just going off of what I heard or read at one point. I can't quote where I heard or read it from uh, at this minute, but I think it's more it's more pyramid structures in South America or maybe even North America than it is in Africa period. All the well, that's a, that, that would, it would 
currently, if you're not keeping abreast with all these 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 fans that they're doing over in Africa, they they're saying that they are constantly constantly finding through satellite imagery. They keep finding more pyramids, but they up under the sand over in Africa. And I'm getting this. This is something I'm getting ready to touch on in, in one second. They're constantly those those deserts over there. At one time, they weren't deserts. So again, something happened to get all of this stuff into this desert-like state. I believe it was when the Sahara dried up. I think the flood had something to do with it. I just don't know how to prove it. it it's um, I got a question too concerning the, the deserts. Uh, <clears throat> Is there anywhere that you know of uh, where scriptural, where it talks about all that desert land? Like, if I'm mistaken, you don't really hear too much mention or any mention at all, maybe, of so much desert land. Like, if it, for, for that to be desert land, then, like, say we're going back there, I, I'm pretty sure you'd have heard some type of mention, somebody wrote it down or something. Uh, it would have been recorded of, of the deserts and, and stuff like that. You know? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, okay, so. Which, which yeah, leads me to believe that, is, that it wasn't desert before. It absolutely wasn't desert before. That's what I was just saying. So I found this out. Uh, doing a lot of, you got to read, you got to read, you got to study, you got to research. The Libyan desert. Up underneath the sand, it's got fused green glass. This gla this type of glass, now sit back because I know uh, some of y'all are going to enjoy this. For 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 sand to be become fused green glass, it has to be a thermal nuclear explosion right. or a or an impact from a uh, a, a comet or something. Right? Some type of immense pressure and heat. Exactly. And they have no history of that in the Libyan desert. They don't have an impact crater. They got impact craters for everything else, but they can't understand why that green glass is under the Libyan desert. Now, this is getting ready to uh, cause a bit of controversy, what I'm about to say. I don't have his name in front of me right now. I will have it ready for next week. But the person that was, uh, it was, oh, it was Oppenheimer. Yeah, Oppenheimer. They asked him a few years after the uh, the bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, what did it feel like to work on the first atomic bomb uh, project? He responded by telling them, and y'all can quote me on this, do you mean the first atomic bomb in modern times? Which means... These scientists are only telling us bits and pieces. They're not telling us everything. Because of what else, what I'm the next statement I'm about to make. There exists an ancient culture of uh over in what's called uh, uh, modern India, Pakistan. The the name of the ancient culture was the uh Indu Valley civilization, specifically Harappa. They have a, a site over there where they found several bodies and a lot of animals. They were just uh, in a deserted uh, city over there. The scientists came over and they conducted all kinds of tests and they found this. It was uh, from 2000, uh, or it was 2500 BC, but they carbon dated the site to it. What caused all of the stir in the scientific community is they did testing on the bodies and they found out that from 2500 BC, some of these bodies were still six times the amount of radiation that was a human body is supposed to have, six times. And they said, that the way that the bodies were in the at the site, it wasn't they didn't die by animals or anything like that. And it the scientists are not saying that it was it was a nuclear explosion. Now, some of those books that I just stated to y'all, these manuscripts, 
like the Marbada, they detailed in ancient history where it was a uh, a war that went on down here on Earth where they used nuclear weapons and what's called uh, great weapons. And it's they're saying that in these manuscripts that th this is why the Pacific Islands and certain ancient civilizations that we've all been hearing about forever such as Lemuria, uh, uh, Atlantis, how they got sunk because it was a great war back then. It, it makes, it comes to my mind or what was detailed in Enoch when Michael and those beings came and they had to uh, get rid of these giants and those other, uh, the watchers. I don't know, but that's what it brings to mind. Now, so we've got some craziness happening in Harappa, something that nobody can under, can explain scientifically, and it's from 2500 BC. Now, I got so, a, real quick. So it's a uh, a symbol or drawing. Um, I can't remember. Uh, I'm, I'll find it for you and try to post it uh, in the, in the group me for NHIT. But there's a uh, a a a drawing of um i guess it's a cave drawing or whatever uh and it shows the guy dropping like a bomb or something like a big uh it looks like you know like a nuclear bomb or something like a, a big bomb and uh you know the drawing got uh you know big waves coming from from the uh from the bomb or something you know showing that it was a, a very powerful weapon um, it's really, you know, real, real, real old, and they found it in the cave, along with a lot of other drawings. But um, you know, sometimes you can see it if you when you scroll through different things. And I know some people have talked about it before, but uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the drawing or the name of the. Uh, what they yeah. carbon dated to? I'm just curious. Uh, ah, I, I can't remember. I don't know. It's it's like it's like on the cave. It's like one of them Egyptian type drawings. You know, it's like that type of. I don't know if they found it over there in one of those uh, tombs or, or or something, but um, it's definitely a drawing. I'm going to find it for you and see if I can find it and show you what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure you've seen it before. When you see it, you're going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that before. All right. Now, we just spoke about the pyramids a few minutes ago and how they all over the world. I want to give you all some, some sites where they're at. It's going to shock some of y'all. Off the coast of Cuba, they have pyramids which have been discovered and they're submerged underneath water. Now, everybody that's, that's listening to this program tonight, listen to this service, I hope that nobody believes that the ancient world that we are in today, the, the ancient world from back then, is uh, indicative of modern civilization. In other words, that these parameters, the names of these lands, the peoples, uh, how the earth looks back then versus how it is now. I hope that nobody believes that uh, at some point that the ocean, uh, when you look where those pyramids are, it tells you that the water level has risen dramatically for those things to be submerged underwater. But I got more though. So you get off the coast of Cuba. Then you have Rock Lake, Wisconsin. Nobody, nobody ever would have expected that, right? It's pyramids submerged underwater in Rock Lake, Wisconsin. Here's another thing that we didn't know. Remember I told y'all it's some stuff that was going on with America. America has some deep lore to it. A lot of history if you ever read any books by the natives or the people that they send is the natives and uh that's a lot of testimony about uh monstrosities and stuff going on over here in america so we we now have uh uh, uh we spoke about rock lake wisconsin we spoke about the pyramids submerged over off the coast of cuba we did not speak about Cahokia or present day St. Louis in the 200 pyramid type structures that's been uh, located over there. 
again in America, again in the Midwest. I don't know what it is. And when y'all found out about the state of Ohio, everything they got going on in that state, that's going to be part of next week's teaching. Kalab just mentioned about the pyramids and, he, and, and, and us being uh, of the belief that it was more pyramids over in Central and South America than it is in Egypt. Here's another discovery. In Cairo, Egypt, in the West Bank now, over 130 pyramid structures have been excavated in the Egyptian desert. Scholars believe that's only one third have been discovered in the Egyptian desert. So they believe it's, it's much, much more. I just had spoke with Kalab again. He's been interacting. Uh, Bear Watkins agreed. There are, and from 2010, now it's sat satellite imagery of Saqqar or over in uh, Egypt. It reveals a pyramid, and scientists are saying it's at least 17 other pyramids right there in that location that they can uh, view through satellite imagery. All right. And they all buried over there, as uh, I was telling Kalab, underneath the sand. This has to tell you when they built those pyramids, they didn't build them underneath the sand. So something happened for them to be submerged like that, and I'm willing to bet y'all it was the flood. Right. Why? What is in those? What is in those structures that he didn't want people to have access to them? That's what they, nobody's talking about. Nobody's meditating on. All right, Yomokuni, Japan. They got they got some pyramids over there. But they built for something that's not human. They're built for humanoids, some type of gigantic humanoids, but not Homo sapiens. When you look at the steps, the thrones, and all of that, they was not built for us. We're getting ready to we put enough information out there for people to look at. It's one more thing that I want to detail and, and share with y'all before we get off. There's a gentleman, and this, this occurred on February the 17th, 1600. An astronomer from Rome, Italy, by the name of Gidani Bruno. Gidani Bruno. He was in prison for eight years by the Catholic Church. Guess why he was in prison for it? He was in prison for these eight years because he started teaching that the earth is not the center of the universe and that there's other life forms and life out in the cosmos. They locked him up for this. And then when they let him out, when they got ready to let him out, because he wouldn't recant of what his, his, his thesis was, they burned him alive. Wow. The Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church has done everything under their power to block Enoch and Jubilees from the canon of Scripture. Even though our ancient ancestors that wrote the Scripture, Enoch is a part of the Bible and as his jubilees over in parts of Africa. So y'all meditate on that. This is the account of the giants part two <clears throat> megalithic structures. Do we have any specific prayer requests before we uh get started? All right, let's cover up. Let's give a give you our why his due. Hallelujah, Yah. Praise you, Father Yahweh, and thank you, Father Yahweh. Thanking you, Father Yahweh, again for our health. Thank you for waking us up this day, Father. Thank you for having patience with us, Father. Thank you, Father, for showing us graciousness, Father, and favor and mercy, Father. We thank you, Father Yahweh, for taking pleasure in us, Father. Uh, 
uh, proclaiming your word, Father, and promoting your way, Father. And Father, we thank you for your travel mercies. We thank you, Father Yahweh, for hearing our petitions regarding extending the graciousness that you've delivered to us, to our family members, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, parents, grandparents, siblings, and near of kin. And we pray, Father, for the brothers and sisters that are incarcerated, Father, that are seeking to be set free as free people in society. And we also pray, Father Yahweh, for Sister Yahweh Shabi and her health, Sister uh, Shalom Yah, Father Yahweh, and her health, uh, their family members and loved ones. And we pray for Papa Franks and his health, Father, his family members and loved ones. And Father Yahweh, we uh, we bring uh, Brother Yahweh Da Ban Yashra'al, Brother Yahweh Kanan Ban Yashra'al up for petition as they are amongst the brothers and sisters that are incarcerated, that are seeking to be set free as free men in society. And Father Yahweh, we once again thank you for giving us this opportunity uh, for providing us with this new stream yard uh, uh, technology that we are now a part of to help us to share these uh, teachings and this knowledge with our people. And Father, we pray and ask and bring these things before you uh, Father, for not only ourselves, but for again, for our family members and loved ones and for the brothers and sisters that are incarcerated. And we do so, Father, in the name of our Master and Savior, Yahawashi Hamashayak of Nazareth. In his name we pray. Hallelujah. Aman. 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 All right, uh, Anybody got any questions? It ain't too many people in the chat today. Um, <clears throat> that's expected some days. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, we're going off live now. I thank everybody for listening. And uh, more than likely, people will go back and view this information, this historical information about the giants and about the uh, uh, information that was discovered. And you can. Uh, Look up those sources, and if you need any more information on it, inbox me or email me uh, here on Facebook or uh, our email, which is posted. All right, Shalom for the audience. <laughs>